While the glue is drying, I can prepare all the pieces that are going to go in the back. So it measures 180 round, so I'm going to give a mil gap each side, which means 178 for all of my pieces. So the perspex I'm going to cut on a table saw or elsewhere. The plywood I'll cut slightly oversized and then plane down to size. And the foam and backing pieces I could cut on a board with a craft knife and a steel rule. I'll do the foam now. Small cut, 178, and the same on the other side. And then join them. Same again on the other side. And we have a square bit of foam, which with any luck, will sit neatly in the back of there. The glue's set on the dowels now. I've just cut the ends off, but unfortunately my video died. So I'll just show you here. There's a little bit of tear on it, but I will plane over the edges all the way around and the front and back, and that'll smooth them off. So now I'm going to plane round the front and back faces and all the edges to get rid of all the pencil marks and make it nice and flush at the mitered joints. I have my granddad's old smoothing plane, which I've restored, sanded all the rust off, off the base plate, off the irons. Sharpened it all up, reground it, and it's good as new. I'm working on my portable workbench now. Just gives me a larger clamp which I can put my piece in. I've also marked two opposite corners because they're the slightly higher points that causes the slight rock in the frame. It's not the end of the world if I don't manage to get rid of that because on the wall, the top won't be touching the wall, the bottom will. So all four points won't be on the wall, but I'll see what I can do. Just got it set to take a very fine amount off. It means more passes, but I don't want to overdo it. So I'd rather take off a small amount lots of times than a big amount and find I've gone too far. Pencil marks nearly all gone now. as has the slight step. That's got it, so I'll turn 90 degrees. There's something very satisfying about working wood with planes and chisels.
There's no marks left, but this is the corner that was higher. So I'm going to do a few more passes to make it more equal to the one I've just done. I've taken the rule part of my combination square out to use as a straight edge so I can just hold it against the timber and check for any air, well anything that's visible through the gap. There's a very slight amount visible there. Trying to turn the corners at the corner so that I don't get any tear out going across the grain of the wood. Sometimes the plane runs away with me a little. Finally I want to plane the edges. I'm going to do it from each side into the middle. Sorry, from the middle to each side because I don't want to knock over any of the joints. Get rid of the top of the dowel first because the toe of the plane is going to tap against it otherwise. It's pretty flat now. There's one final thing I want to do to this piece before I sand and varnish it, which is just give a little round over on the back, just a, a neat, neater finish. And it's what the ones that I'm making these to match have on the back of them. So once again, I'm doing this with the router and I've got a round over bit in. This time I don't need to use the guide because this has got a little bearing at the bottom, which runs along the edge of the wood and stops the bit from going any further in than you want. Pretty pleased with that. And I just want to give the work a quick sand down to give it a nice finish. I've actually put a little bit of wood filler on the couple of mitres that weren't quite flush, so the sanding will also make that smooth. And then I'll be able to varnish. I've made myself a little sanding block because. I don't have a power sander, so I'm doing it by hand. Sandpaper has a tendency to slide around if you put it on the bench, so I've glued 
three and a half strips of sandpaper to a block of MDF which is slightly bigger than my frames so I can just move those around on here. I'm just going to thamp it down at the edge. I don't want to take much off, just give a little bit of a fine finish. So I've got 240 grit on here. Just putting a little bit more pressure on each edge because ideally you want to sand with the grain. And obviously my grain is going perpendicular at each corner. That's better. I'll do the fronts first while the sandpaper's still got enough roughness to it and then I'll go around the edges, finally the back. Finished sanding and they've actually come up really nice, pretty impressed. I just, by ha after I'd finished all the faces, I ran a bit by hand over the corners. The uh, round that, that I put on last night and the inside edge. Very nice. I'm gonna crack on with the varnish now because each coat will take about four hours to dry before I can recoat it. I want to do three coats and sand it off a little bit in between the second and the third. So while the coats are drying, I can get everything else cut, but I'll get the first coat on now. I'm just using a, a plain satin clear varnish just to give the wood a bit of protection. I'm quite happy for the natural pine to be the main feature. At some point in the future, I want to experiment with some more sort of advanced woodwork, I guess, um, finishes such as beeswax, linseed oil and some wiping varnish. But I have no experience in any of that and I'll save that experimentation for the future. So for now, just a basic varnish. I'm not going to varnish the inside because I don't want any of the vapours to be sealed into the box. I'm just going to do the front sides. I'm not, I just might just go around the corner. There'll be gummed paper on the back, but I'll do all the edges that are going to be seen while it's mounted. I'm varnishing with the grain and try not to get it on too thick this time. 